just at his status? Well, we're still waiting for the MRI, and, and uh, we hope to get that tomorrow, and that should tell us more. Uh, there was some encouraging news uh, on Sunday. Initially, it was thought to be an MCL. Uh, it doesn't appear to be the case. It's on the outside of the knee. Still incredibly sore with some instability, so that's why we need the MRI. But um, uh, he's out for this week, uh, and, and uh, how long he'll be out, we'll know more once we get the MRI. So. Uh, he's a tough kid, and, and we'll keep our fingers crossed on that, but obviously losing uh, him on the third play of the game, then losing Daniel Wyatt with uh, just under 10 minutes to go in the second quarter uh, impacted us a lot. And, and uh, Daniel, it looks like, will be out for probably a minimum of three to four weeks, uh, maybe longer. The x-rays were negative for a fracture, but there's some bone um, you know, disformity in it. Uh, uh, is what I've been told, and so maybe a radiologist is going to have to look at that to see exactly what's going on there. But uh, uh, obviously, it uh, uh, you know impacts us. We also also lost Jonathan Rowe, our left tackle, starting left tackle, who was starting his first game with an MCL, and four to six weeks is is uh, his time that uh, he'll miss. So uh, it uh, not the way you want to start. Uh, certainly with the outcome of the game, certainly with the injuries that we have, but. It's, uh, it's uh, the hand we're dealt, and, uh, and we'll move forward and, and uh, uh, go back to practice today and get ready to, to you know, for Portland State. <coughs> How do you guys uh, move forward? I mean, big blows right there with your running game. Do you have the guy, Do you have guys that, that can step in that role uh, on Saturday? Well, I've put an advertisement in the Lumberjack, and uh, <laughs> we'll see who's out there. But uh, it's Ricky Sims right now. He'll be number one, Sutter Troy Sierra, uh, a true freshman. Uh, will be number two. We're moving Jamari Sanders from uh, defensive back over to running back uh, position he played in high school. We'll uh, try to you know bring him along as fast as we can. So uh, it uh, it is what it is. You know again we've got to figure out a way offensively uh, to be effective. Still we believe we can, uh, but it's going to result in some changes. Obviously when you don't have you know the two players that you had kind of built your offense around. So uh, we'll uh, uh, you know. We'll figure out exactly the best way to go, and, and uh, Ricky Sims is a different type of back, obviously, than, than either Nick or Daniel, but uh, still can be productive, we believe, and uh, uh, and we'll give the freshman set of Trace here some time as well. Will we see a more passing? I know uh, Kyle was uh, running a lot uh, in the first game, but not having those backs, you know, will you guys uh, do more, go into there more? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll look at that, uh, uh, certainly Manning, but... Uh, uh, again, I think uh, you know you've got to kind of control the your ground game a little bit to, to set up some things in the pass game, and, and so we don't want to you know we don't want to you know just just throw aside everything that we worked on in fall camp and, and reinvent a new offense as we, as we move forward here. We don't think that's the right the right approach to take. We have confidence in the players that are healthy and that will suit up Saturday at Portland State. And uh, with Kyle, we've got to do a better job protecting him. Uh, everybody saw how mobile he is. He was the one, you know, he'll, he'll admit that uh, he was out of the pocket too much and too frequently. Uh, and we need to keep him in the pocket a little bit, but he's an effective weapon that we will continue to use. Um, you've been coaching a long time. Has this ever happened so quickly just to have guys, you know, go down? That means so much uh, to your offense. You know, back in, uh, I have been coaching a long time. And, uh, <laughs> I, I, I yeah, should have pointed that out. Thanks for that. <laughs> thanks for that. But uh, back in 1992, uh, believe it or not, we uh, played a game at Western Oregon in the opener and we lost our top two running backs in that game. And uh, uh, we ended up, uh, there was a freshman that I had left home that trip that I had planned to redshirt and uh, made the decision that we got back that we're going to have to play the freshman. That freshman ended up running for over a thousand yards that year, over four thousand in his career. His name was John Bruna. He was an All-American for us. and, and uh, so let's hope that maybe there's uh, you know someone sitting that uh, sitting on the roster that no one's really heard of yet that that, that can step up and, and do that. So as I said, this game uh, is, is is cruel at times, and, and uh, again, it uh, uh, you know I don't know if I've ever experienced that where three plays into it you lose you know arguably your top player uh, that way. But uh, uh, we'll figure out a way. We'll 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 still you know we've got to still we got ten games ahead of us. We got to find a way to be effective, and and uh, we will. This week in practice, uh, the defense obviously a focus. You guys gave up what over five hundred yards against Sam Frazier. Uh, will he be working on to, to improve that? Well, the reward for that defense uh, is to now face the number one offense 
in Division One AA, uh, which Portland State has. They're averaging, I think, 618 yards of offense, 325 on the ground, uh, and that includes uh, their game last week at Cal of the Pac-12, where they had over 500 yards of offense. So uh, we're playing the best offense in 1AA. Uh, their offense coordinator, Bruce Barnum, was part of my first staff back in 1989, as was their running back coach, John Ely. He was with me for about 10 years. So that we have familiarity uh, that way, but uh, that's going to do us no good in terms of trying to line up and stop. We just have to be better. We have to be better and stop the run because their game starts with that pistol offense where they just pound it at you, as they did with Cal, and, and just come at you, come at you, and then they try to get the safeties to to you know, concentrate or focus on that run and get behind you right away with some big plays like they did at Cal. And um, it's not real uh, sophisticated what they do. They're going to sit there and pistol and just hammer you with a very good running back and then a quarterback in McDonough, the big, uh, big sky player of the week that, uh, that can beat you uh, multiple ways. So um, again, it's uh, uh, obviously we have to be better than we were last Saturday. Uh, it, it, uh, there's no excuse for giving up the amount of yards we did through the air, over 500 yards passing. It was a GNAC record that we surrendered. Uh, we will uh, uh, find players that can go out there and do a better job and do their responsibility. We had players trying to do too much. And maybe you can attribute that to a first game and the jitters and the atmosphere and such. But uh, you've got to play team defense. You've got to have 11 guys doing their job at a very high level. and. Uh, you can't sit there and try to do everyone else's job. And certainly that was the case at times with our secondary where uh, they were getting out of their coverage areas or, or away from their assignments and trying to do too much and, and got burned because of it. So let's hope that, uh, that we've learned from last week and, play, and, and can play uh, much, uh, much closer to our level of, uh, of expectation and ability. Coach, uh, Portland State well, presents uh, like you said, a very good offense. And last week, it's a great it's offense. It's beyond very good. It's, it's uh, they they went down to Cal, uh, Cal Berkeley, and shredded them. They they, you know, they score. I think the third play of the game over the top. Then they come back and have a seventy-some yard run that was called back by penalty. Um, it is uh, in my time here, I've not seen an offense as potent mm -hmm. a, as this offense. Clearly, okay. and you said that uh, you know last week. The players, the defensive players, were not disciplined. And I've talked to several defensive players, and they say, you know, if one link in the chain is, is weak, as you can see, what happened. Now, what what do you tell those defenders? And um, you know, will you pull pull the you know pull them out of the game if they're not doing their job? Well, absolutely. It, it just uh, I think that holds true on both sides of the ball. If you feel a player's not doing his job, you you, you have to make changes. But uh, again, our kids have a tremendous amount of pride. No one was more disappointed with that performance than the players on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, we have high expectations uh, throughout our program, and, and uh, to give up a GNAC record 518 yards or whatever it was through the air, uh, it's just there. there is no excuse for that. And that's not to take away anything from Simon Frazier from what they did. But uh, uh, again, our players have a tremendous amount of pride. They are extremely disappointed. Uh, with their performance on Saturday. And in football, fortunately, you get another Saturday. Uh, at least we're at that point in the season where you still do. So the, the remedy is you go back to work, starting with today's practice. You make the corrections. You learn from what happened the previous game, as you learn from all games. And you're better the next time out. So that's certainly uh, the approach that, that we will take and, and the approach I know our players will take. And then the last question for me, Coach, you talked about Cam Buell a lot uh, during preseason, and uh, he had some plays in the game that really opened some eyes. What, what do you think his house progression is going? And uh, he's just, he, he, he's, uh, I believe, an all-league player to make. Uh, he's got that, that great combination of size, uh, ability, uh, you know, size, talent, and instincts. And, and uh, certainly you saw those instincts, you know, on Saturday where he made some big plays and some big hits. And, and uh, again, just a redshirt freshman. So uh, he's still a developing, a developing player, uh, but uh, I think you'll see him as, as the season go on, uh, moves on, he'll get more and more comfortable, and as a result of that, uh, get more and more playing time. But uh, we're certainly pleased with what he's done. Coach, with the defensive effort, uh, do you feel as a 
breakdown up front, the line of scrimmage, inability to get pressure, or was it a breakdown in the defensive backfield? More in the backfield, uh, although yes, we have to get more pressure and can certainly help our secondary out. But uh, again, we gave up a touchdown on a bubble pass where the corner who, who bit on that has no responsibility for that. He simply came off his man uh, and reacted uh, to an area that, he, that the, he, again, he doesn't have responsible for. So that's got to get corrected. We gave up a touchdown on a reverse pass uh, where, where players are coming out of a coverage. We gave up a big play where the safety had man coverage and he bites on a run fake into the opposite side of the line. And those, those are discipline issues, uh, you know, in terms of personal discipline from, from different players of doing their job, executing their assignment. So, again, you correct it, you give them a chance to correct themselves, or you make changes. And then that's what we'll look at. Of course, you lost uh, Nick three plays in the game. <coughs> you lose uh, uh, Daniel Wyatt in the second half. Um, someone nobody's talking about, you lost your leading receiver heading into that game. What can you tell us about uh, Marquis Deadweller, his inability not to be with the program at well, again, tremendously disappointing. Uh, we found out 1.30 Friday afternoon that uh, our lone returning uh, receiver, Marquise, was uh, declared uh, academically ineligible uh, by the NC2A, and we knew this was a possibility. But uh, it's just uh, very frustrating from a coaching standpoint. Uh, there's a lot of issues and, and reasons pertaining to this. Uh, but, uh, again, the impact that uh, something like that has on certainly Marquise, his family, uh, and, our, and his teammates uh, is significant. And, and uh, uh, again, we were uh, we knew that this was a possibility. We were hopeful, but uh, the, you know it, it, it rattled us on Friday. Uh, you know he's a, he's a very uh, well-respected uh, teammate, and to lose him, uh, you know, was you know for the reasons we did was difficult. And do they, why so late? By the incident, well, I guess we got my question. We're talking day before the first yeah, game. Yeah, uh, and I'm not sure I'm the one to answer that question. Really, it just uh, uh, there were you know it was it was drawn out a little bit. Obviously, you wish that decisions could be reached earlier, um, and and uh, you know it, it, it's it's one of those things that uh, uh, frustrates you. Coach, obviously after a loss, a lot of people were focusing on the bat. What positives did you see out of the team, and things you liked moving forward? Well, again, I, you know, we see young players that now have that game out of their belt. I think that's the most important thing is that I kept, you know, the answer to the question of how you're going to be coach was I don't know. And, and, and now i got an idea where I've had a chance to see some of these players and, and uh, uh, feel good about some of the younger players that, that, that we have. Uh, now, there were a lot of mistakes. You know, we've got to do a better job at, at the tackle position of, of blocking those edge rushers on offense. Uh, you know, I thought uh, Kalechi... Uh, Wadivia, you know, for his first game, he stepped in and replaced Marquise Deadweiler in the starting role. Ended up with 11 catches, you know, for 100 yards or something like that. Uh, thought he had a real nice game. Chase Crevichet, I think everybody saw the type of football player and the type of talent that he brings to the table. Uh, that was great to see. On, on the defensive side, you know, J.J. Evans had 11 tackles. Taylor Mitchell played a, a, a solid game as well. Uh, we've got, you know, Silas Sarvinsky, uh, you know, is just kind of a lunch pail guy that does his job, uh, you know, in, 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 in the inside, uh, the interior of our defensive front. So there were some, some good performances, certainly, but uh, again, we have uh, high expectations. Uh, so we certainly don't, uh, uh, don't want to make a habit of losing at home, losing period, but uh, we had almost 7,000 fans there on, on Saturday night, and, and that just shows that... Uh, uh, people are excited to, you know, about Humboldt football and this this team, and, and uh, so we feel we let some people down with our play, you know. And uh, uh, unfortunately, as we would get it to three points in the second half, the next drive it was a ten point game again, and, and uh, we can never get over that hump, and, and made some critical turnovers, as Kyle mentioned, down the stretch when maybe we had a chance to make some plays, and really that's what it comes down to. In that first game, when a play needed to be made, it was made by a Simon Fraser player not a humble state player, and, and I think the outcome was determined, you know, largely because of that.